Hi, we'll be covering refraction on spherical surfaces and lens in this video. When you're solving problems in respect of lenses and spherical surfaces, it may appear to you that there are too many formulas and there are too many special cases with u taking a negative sign sometimes and f taking a positive sign at some other time. And it may get confusing. It is actually not so difficult and there are only four equations which you need to understand well to solve problems relating to spherical surfaces and lens. So I'll be covering these four equations in this video. I also have plenty of solved examples to illustrate how to choose a sign convention and how to choose a particular equation in a given problem. So here we go. This is the most important equation and forms the basis of the other three equations. So I assume you are familiar with the equation and I will focus on the sign conventions here. So there are four important things which you should know. One is that the y axis is drawn touching the spherical surface and the medium and the i is placed on the right hand side of the y axis on the positive x axis. The ray of light is assumed to be coming from the minus x axis to the positive x axis. The second important thing is that u and v if are placed or are found to be on the negative x axis have a negative value and if v for example is found to be positive then it means that the image is on the positive x axis. The third is the radius of curvature. So if we find that the radius of curvature is bulging away from the eye, its value is taken as plus r. And if the radius of curvature is bulging towards the eye, the value is taken as minus r. And the fourth thing is the refractive index. The refractive index of the medium where the object is placed is taken as mu1 and where the eye is placed is taken as mu2. We will see many solved examples of this and these are very important concepts. So please remember these. This is our second equation. And in uh, textbooks, you will also see the left hand side written as one by F. Here the important thing is that R1 is the radius of curvature which faces the object and R2 is the radius of curvature which is away from the object. Apart from this, all the sign convention which we saw above apply in this equation as well. So this is our third equation which we are very familiar with. So here the sign conventions as we saw in equation 1 apply, especially remember u and v. Also f is taken as positive for convex lenses and negative for concave lens. The fourth equation is for combination of lenses. And this applies only when the two lenses are touching each other, not when they are separate from each other. We will see some solved examples of all these equations in subsequent slides. We are asked to be in this situation here. So here we see that u, the object is placed on the negative x axis and therefore u is minus 20. We also see that the spherical surface bulges away from the eye and we therefore take R as plus 5. The object is placed in air which is equal to 1, so mu1 is equal to 1 and the eye is placed in glass, so mu is mu2 is 1.5. And on substituting the values, we get V is equal to plus 30 centimeter which means that the image is formed on the positive x-axis. We have our second example here and here the surface is bulging inwards towards the eye. So we take r as minus 10 and on substituting the values we find v as minus 15 centimeter which means that the image is formed on the same side as the object on the negative x-axis. Here we are given a glass sphere 
and the object is placed 2 cm from the center and we are required to find the position of the image. So we find here that uh, the y axis uh, should be drawn on the boundary of the spherical surface and the medium. So we move the x and the y axis. Now the object is on the negative x axis and uh, OO is the radius and therefore U is minus 8. We also find that the surface of the sphere is bulging towards the eye so we put R as minus 10. The object is placed in glass so mu1 is 1.5 and mu2 is 1. So the negative signifies that the image is formed on the same side of the object on the negative x-axis. We will use our equation to solve problems of refraction on plane surface. Here we are given that the object is placed in a 2 meter deep pool and we are asked to find the position of the image. So we will reorient the diagram to suit our sign convention and uh, we will put the y axis on the boundary of the medium and uh, water. So u is minus 2 and uh, since it's a flat surface r is infinity and the object is placed in water so mu1 is 1.33. So the negative V signifies that the image is on the same side as the object and this is consistent with what we have seen when we studied refraction on plane surface. Here we are asked to find the focal length of this lens which has a radius of curvature of 20 cm on one side and 10 cm on the other side and it is placed in air. So here the object is taken on the negative x axis and R1 which is closer to the object is also bulging outwards. So we take R1 as plus 20 and R2 which is bulging towards the eye as minus 10. The left hand side of the lens, lens maker equation we write as equal to 1 by f and on solving we get f is equal to 40 by 3 positive which means it's a convex lens. We look at our second example and here we have the outer surface which has a radius of curvature 20 and the inner surface has a radius of curvature 10 and we are asked to find f. So here since both are bulging outwards uh, r1 and r2 both are plus have a positive sign and on substituting we find f as minus 40 uh, which means that it is a concave lens. In our next example we have the object and the lens both placed in water. The radius of curvature of the outer surface is 20 and since it is bulging outwards we take R1 as plus 20. We take R2 as infinity since it's a flat surface. F is equal to 160 signifies that this is a convex lens. In our second example the lens is placed in an aqueous chamber like an eye and the object is placed outside in air. So here we use our first equation. Because we have to find the focal length, we take u as infinity. Mu1 is where the object is placed is 1. We find v which acts as an object for the second surface. So this f 160 by 3 which is positive signifies that this arrangement is acting like a convex lens. 
Here we have a combination of a convex lens and a concave lens which are separated by 10 cm. The object is placed 40 cm from the convex lens and the focal length of the lens is plus 20. We are asked to find the position of the final image. So this image is 40 centimeters from the convex lens, uh, which means it is 30 centimeters from the concave lens. This image acts as an object for the second lens. So we take U as plus 30 since it's on the positive X axis. And focal length is minus 30 since it's a concave lens. And V is equal to infinity signifies that the image is formed at infinity. Here we are given a plano convex lens and a plano concave lens which are touching each other. The refractive index of the convex lens is mu1 and mu2 of the concave lens. And we are asked to find the focal length of the combined lens. So we first find the focal length of the convex lens. Uh, for the convex lens, the R1 is taken as infinity and R2 is bulging towards the eye, so is taken as minus R. Similarly, for the second lens, we have R1 which is bulging towards the eye as minus R and R2 as infinity. And then we apply the fourth equation and find the value of focal length. Hope you found it useful. Thanks.